Okay. Good morning. I'm City Council Member Keith Powers, Chair of the Criminal Justice Committee, and this is a, a hearing on the Criminal Justice Committee. Today we'll be voting on two important resolutions aimed at improving the lives of people who are justice involved. We last heard both of these resolutions on May 1st, 2019. Before I speak about Resolution 829, which I am sponsoring, I want to offer an opportunity to our colleague, Councilmember Drom, to speak about his resolution, proposed Resolution 143A, in support of Assembly Bill 2500 and Senate Bill 1623 in the state legislature, uh, which has been titled the Humane Alternative to Long-Term Solitary Confinement Act. Uh, before I offer it to him, I also want to note just who we're joined by here, uh, Committee Member Rory Lansman, and Committee Members uh, Lika Amprey Samuel, Bob Holden, and Carlina Rivera. And with that, I will offer it to our colleague, Councilmember Drom, to speak on his resolution. Thank you very much, and that's very kind of you to let me speak first. I do have um, to run across the street to get a uh, vote on other issues. But thank you, Chair Powers, for your leadership on criminal justice reform. I also want to thank the advocates, especially the Halt Solitary campaign, whose bravery and tenacity have steadfastly pushed this issue into the public consciousness. Many members of that movement know all too well the devastating impact of long-term solitary confinement. New York State has the opportunity to end state-sanctioned torture, and I am proud of this council for leading the way with Resolution 143, which urges our state legislature to pass and the governor to sign Assembly 2500 and Senate 1623, also known as the Halt Solitary Confinement Act. International experts agree that long-term solitary confinement, defined as more than 15 days by the United Nations, causes irreparable psychological harm. The devastating impact is all around us. Survivors who are released from incarceration walk our streets, tormented by their experiences in extreme isolation. Families and communities face their own challenges as they interact with these individuals. Healthcare and social service providers have the formidable task of dealing with the mental health uh, repercussions. The criminal justice system shoulders its own burden since many of these individuals without proper support end up back behind bars. The price is too high for our society to, to continue its use of solitary confinement. But now we have the opportunity to put a halt to this odious practice and align New York with international human rights standards. I encourage the members of this committee to vote for this resolution, which will help build momentum for this critical component of criminal justice reform. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Drum. I also just want to just recognize that Councilor Drum has been outspoken about this topic for quite a long time. And at a hearing we had a few uh, few months ago, both Councilor Drum and Councilor Holden made a, a strong point of pushing back on Department of Corrections around not providing even basic library services to those who are in solitary. And as a result of that, that specific day, that actual day, the Department of Corrections agreed to start doing that. So thank you both for your advocacy around that issue. Um, uh, following up with that, I want to speak just quickly about Resolution 829, which is a resolution I've introduced, which calls on the state to pass Senate Bill 1343 and Assembly Bill 5493, known as the Less is More Act, to reform pro parole, conditional release, revocation, presumptive release, and post-release supervision in New York. This bill would restrict the use of incarceration for technical violations and afford people on parole, uh, parole uh, uh, Prior, uh, and afford people uh, hearings on criminal justice before uh, on parole before being detained. Um, as we're talking about the closure of Rikers Island, this is to me one of the important areas where we can make a difference, and we have to talk about passing the Less Is More Act. While we've made great strides in decreasing the jail population here in New York City, the number of people in jail on Rikers Island for parole violations has been increasing, according to the Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice. It's the one area where the population is going up. Many are incarcerated for technical parole violations, such as staying out past curfew or missing an appointment. Incarcerating people for such small violations is not just unnecessary, it's wrong. By passing this resolution, we will send a clear message to those in Albany that we need to stop locking people up for small violations and start investing in services and, uh, and other things to help rehabilitate people. Um, with that being said, we will go ahead and vote on both resolutions before the committee today. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on criminal justice, resolutions 143 and 829, chair powers. I vote aye on both. Ampre Samuel. I vote aye. Lanceman. Aye. 
Richards. Aye. Holden. Aye. Rivera. Aye. I vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Both items have been adopted by the committee. Thanks. So we're going to leave it open just for a few minutes. Thanks so much.